Hello, good afternoon. How are you today? I'm really good. I am really good. That's nice. Did you have lunch? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we have six students. I have six students for now. Yay. Eight. Nine. Nine students. You can turn on your videos and microphones, okay? So we can okay. see talk to each other. Boom. There. Okay, boom. You are today. Else, I want to see your faces. Turn on your video. Okay, there is bigger. Jenny. Mitch. Okay, so I think we can start now. So our subject. What is, do you know what is our subject for today? No, I don't know. Okay, our subject about for today animals. Science. Is science. So our topic for today is about. It might be my. It might be my. Adaptation of animals. Okay, adaptation One of time. animals. So in this topic, here are the lessons we're going to study. So the first one is adaptation. Second is adaptation for finding food. And the third one is adaptation for escaping predators. So we have three subtopics for this lesson. Let's start. So for the first one, which is adaptation. So what is adaptation? Here, refers to both structures that an organism has as well as what it does to be able to survive in an environment. Again, it refers to both the structures that an organism has well as what it does to be able to survive in an environment. So adaptation can be structural adaptation. Structural adaptation is when a body of an organism is especially suited to the organism's environment. The second type of adaptation is the behavioral adaptation. It is how a living organism behaves in a certain way in order to survive their living conditions. So we have two types of adaptation, structural adaptation and behavioral adaptation. You know the difference? Structural means it is how the parts of their body were made so that they can live or survive in their environment. Behavioral is how they behave in their environment so that they can survive. Okay, so here is a picture of different kinds of animals. So let's go now with the second uh, subtopic of our lesson, which is the adaptation for finding food. So why do animals need food? Any idea? Why do they need food? So animals need food to have energy and to survive. If they don't eat, they won't have energy, so it means they're gonna die. Okay. 
continue. So, adaptation for finding food includes for getting food. Some animals have behavioral adaptations for obtaining food. Lions tend to hunt in pairs to increase their chance of bringing their, their prey. So they hunt in pair or group. In this picture, they hunt in group, but usually they hunt in pair so that it will be easier or it will increase their chance to catch their prey. Okay. If you can see the pictures. So in the left part, you can see the picture of lions hunting a buffalo in group. And in the other side is a picture of, or a GIF of two tigers hunting a deer. Next. Also in getting food, tigers have stripes that makes it difficult for them to see by their okay, here. So the tiger's stripes uh, enables them to hide, okay, hide, so that they can hide themselves when they are looking for their prey. Here's another example or picture of a tiger. It helps them hide themselves, okay? Their stripes help them hide themselves so that their prey cannot see them. Birds have specially adapted feet to assist them in obtaining food. If you've seen the feet of birds, so they have, uh, they use it to get their food. Here is an example, an eagle that uses its claws to catch fish. Another one here. Okay. If you can see it. Some animals have feathers that helps them blend into their surrounding. So in this picture, what can you see? Owl. Very good. How about in the other side, another picture? Can you see something? No? So this is a bird that blends itself to its environment. It's a bird, okay? Blend means they camouflage, okay? Camouflage refers to the means by which an organism makes itself appear to a part of its surrounding air, okay? They also adapt for eating. Many animals have adaptations to help them eat their food. Tigers and wolves have sharp pointed teeth called fangs to help them tear into flesh. What is fang? Do you know what is a fang? So fangs are this part. Yeah. Also for wolves. So here, wolves also have fangs to tear the flesh of their food. Okay. 
tear the flesh from the animals or prey they catch to be their food. Birds have specially adapted beaks for feeding. Hummingbirds have long tube-like beaks that resembles a straw. Eagles have hooked beaks to tear the meat of their prey. So here is a hummingbird. If you see its beak, this part is the beak. So it's like a straw. It's a tube-like beak that looks like a straw. What do hummingbirds eat? You know what they eat? Hummingbirds uh, suck the nectars from the flowers. Okay. And here is an eagle with a hook beak. It helps them uh, tear the meat of their fray, prey. Let's continue. Uh, here. So, butterflies have coiled straw-like mouth called proboscis for reaching into flowers to extract the nectar. So this is a close-up picture of a butterfly showing their mouth. Can you see the mouth clear? Yes. Yes. And here is also a picture of a mosquito. Mosquitoes have straw-like mouths to penetrate the skin of animals to suck their blood. So... Mosquitoes do not suck only humans. They also suck animals. Okay. Here is their tube-like mouth or straw-like mouth. Continue. So number three, the adaptation for escaping predator. First one is for hiding. Some animals hide in burrows or holes in daytime to escape being noticed. Animals like the tortoise will hide inside their hard shells when attacked. So here, this is a tortoise being attacked by a leopard, I think. It hides inside their hard shell. Some animals hide under the ground. Next, living in groups. Some animals live in groups for a better chance of survival. Predator will find it difficult to attack an animal in a group. Okay, so predators they like to attack alone animal. They don't usually attack animals living in groups. Example of this is zebras and deer living in herds to escape from predator. Okay, here. If they live together or they stay in group, they have the chance to save each other if somebody or some animals attack one of them. Next is defending themselves. So animals may have structural adaptation to defend themselves. Example. The pupper fish and the porcupine have structures that helps make themselves appear larger than they actually are. 
So here is a puffer fish and a porcupine. There, what do you call this one? Their spikes makes them look larger. In puffer fish, what do they usually do? They suck in water to make their body larger than their actual size. And for porcupine, they have this spikes. They have these spikes that uh, make them look larger or bigger than they actually look. So warning color or pattern. In animal kingdom, bright colors such as red and orange signal danger. So in the animal kingdom, if it, it's color red or orange, it means danger. The poison arrow frog has brightly colored skin, which warns potential predator that it is extremely toxic. Okay, here. This is a poisonous frog. Okay. It is colored orange. If it's bright color, it means it's danger. Moving quickly from danger. Some animals have adaptation that allow them to move quickly away from danger. A squid forces out a jet of water to help it swim quickly away from its predator. So a squid. If you see the video. They force yes. out a jet of water to help them swim faster or quickly. Camouflage. Some animals imitate the color and pattern of their surrounding. Example, the striped pattern on a zebra allows it to blend into the shadow of the grasses in its grassland habitat. Also for tigers, they also have stripes to blend themselves into the grasses. Next, uh, appearing to look like another organism. Some organisms have adapted themselves by appearing to look like another organism. Example of this is monarch butterflies have substance in their bodies that taste bad to their predators. The vice butterfly adapted to look like monarch butterfly to avoid predator. So here is the picture. This is the original monarch butterfly. The monarch does not have a black line across in the veins. And this is the one imitating the monarch butterfly so that predator or predators will not eat them. Okay. Okay. So I also have YouTube video here. a lot like a creature featured in that Harry Potter spin-off film, Fantastic Beasts, but it's known as a stick insect because of its elongated body. Can with you hear? Yes. Okay. Resemble sticks, twigs, or very, very so yes. here is a walking stick. Yes. These bugs usually grow to be around 12 inches in length and are considered by many to be the world's largest insects. As they have been known to reach over 22 inches long and most weigh over just two ounces. Similar to praying mantises, these creatures have slow, repetitive side-to-side -side movements meant to mimic vegetation moving in the wind. 
Number 11, the Malaysian orchid mantis. Here's a pretty one. This species of praying mantis hail from the rainforest of southeastern Asia and has also been dubbed the walking flower mantis, characterized by its brilliant and often concealing coloring, as well as its unique delicate structure mimics parts of the orchid flower with devastating accuracy. The four walking legs look like flower petals to unsuspecting eyes and can change color from pink to white to brown based on the color of their background. These insects are carnivorous, so maybe rethink stopping to smell the flowers. Number 10, the wolf spider. Beautiful but deadly. If you can spot them, you will know which crazy camouflaged critter I'm talking about. Watch out, Brave New World. Enter the wolf spider. These solitary, nocturnal, creepy crawlers are robust and agile hunters with excellent eyesight. These opportunistic hunters are known for pouncing on their prey and occasionally chasing it over short distances. But most will lie patient, wait for an unsuspecting insect to wander into their web, hiding in rocks or sand nearby. Watch out! Wolf spiders inject venom, which creates symptoms like swelling, pain, and itching. And though rarely lethal, wolf spiders are pretty darn poisonous. These spiders can live up to 11 years and are as creepy as they are provocative. Number nine, reef stonefish. This next little guy is the reef stonefish. Can you find them? These strange aquatic creatures are found along the rocky coral of Australian coastlines and can measure up to 50 centimeters or nearly one and a half feet in length. And of course, like all things from Australia, these fish are some of the most venomous and deadly in all the aquatic world. This beautiful but deadly fish can inject venom through any of its 13 sprouts. Not only that, but their sting is extremely painful and dangerous. Oh, and if you think you're safe by staying out of the water, think again. These remarkable creatures can survive up to 24 hours on land. Number eight, the dead leaf mantis. Here is a creepy, tiny, hard to find fella. These species of praying mantis can be found in Southeast Asia and bears a striking resemblance to dead leafy vegetation. These insects vary in color patterns, but it usually sports a light brown to pale orange brown, to sometimes very dark brown, almost black. When disturbed in its hiding place, this clever creature will rock as if caught inside the gentle breeze. And as it happens to fall, it will usually remain utterly motionless until it perceives all threats to be gone. This creepy critter also has wings, which are black and brown, and contain strange patterns which look like crazy sinister eyeballs. These praying mantis usually eat small flying insects like crickets, butterflies, and moths. Number seven, the mimic octopus. I spy with my little eye. Uh, nothing. It just looks like sand. Oh, but wait, is that an eyeball? Creepy. This carefully concealed creature is the Indonesian mimic octopus, who contains the ability to turn virtually any color or pattern when placed in dire straits, though it is usually naturally brown and spotted. This clever aquatic creature can work its pigments to conceal its nature and transform into a sand dune of pure white to brilliant blue to fiery red and even all the way to precocious pink. This octopus of mimicry can also change its shape and can mimic other animals and its surroundings. Number six, the dead leaf butterfly. This butterfly can be found inside the tropical areas of Asia, all the way from India over to the island nation of Japan. What looks like a dry leaf complete with veins and holes is actually this creature's closed wings. These insects have a wingspan of roughly 85 to 110 millimeters, which is approximately three to four inches. These powerful flyers are more frequently spotted from April to November. When their wings are open, especially when looking to attract potential mates, the colors are beautiful and range from indigo blues to lavish purple. Their caterpillar stage is a velvety black creature with long yellowish hair. They can be found in the dense forest with lots of rainfall, and they feed on plants, mostly leaves themselves. Number five, pygmy seahorses. Oh, so cute! These aquatic creatures are found in Southeast Asia in the Coral Triangle area and some of the smallest seahorses in the known world, typically measuring less than two centimeters in height. These tiny little seahorses rest amongst the sea grasses, soft corals, or flowering sea fans. There are at least eight different known species of seahorses, along with several dwarf species out there as well. They are best known for their bright colors and adorable qualities. Number four, buff tip moth. Can you spot our little moth hidden secret agent? These crazy cool camouflage artists begin their lives as yellow and black caterpillars found throughout Europe and Mongolia, most commonly Southern Britain. Once transformed into their final stage of life, these moths are fairly large and heavy bodied with impressive wingspans, which reach between 55 and 69 millimeters. When resting, adults of this species resemble a broken twig of a silver birch and are known for flying in June and July. These creatures often gather 
matter in large numbers, and eat the leaves of lime, birch, hazel, and willow trees, and are known to be heavy eaters, sometimes defoliating entire branches of trees from their wooded world. These silver and gray colored nocturnal flying insects have buffy heads and a buff patch at the end of their wings, and are most commonly found in gardens and shrubbery. Number three, tawny frogmouth. No, stop looking for a frog that's wrong. It's actually a bird, carefully concealed as tree bark. This next camouflaged creature is a bird native to Australia. Though nocturnal, you can often spot them sleeping during the day on trees, if you know where and how to look. These big-headed, stocky birds are often mistaken for owls. They usually measure from 34 to 53 centimeters in length, with weights recorded up to one and a half pounds. Their wingspans are roughly 65 to 98 centimeters long. Birds feed mostly on insects and small invertebrates like frogs or mice. Their brown and gray coloring help them mimic damaged tree branches, providing again that the perfect hiding place is always found in plain sight. These animals are most commonly found in forests and woodlands and the occasional savanna and have adapted to human presence, which allows them to frequent parks and gardens in their homeland of Australia. Okay, that's all. So, those are some examples of animals that hide themselves using camouflage. Uh, do you have any questions? No. Yes? Okay, what's your question? No. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, so, did you understand our lesson? Yes. What Adaptation. Adaptation of animals. And how many kinds of adaptations do we have? How many? Anyone? Okay, I'll, I'll show you. How many adaptation of animals do we have? Okay, how many adaptation of animals do we have? We have two. Two. Okay. Structural adaptation. Structural. And the second is behavioral adaptation. Okay. That ends our lesson for today. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye. Bye bye. bye.